Hi, Mount Vernon. This is Mayor Sean Patterson Howard, and we are here for another Sundays with Sean. We're asking that you please take a moment to share this video. We're asking that you please take a moment to share this video. Tonight, we will be speaking about violence in Mount Vernon, um, specifically the um, uptick in gun violence that we've been seeing here in Mount Vernon uh, that has been affecting our young people, our young people, you know, 18 and under. So we're asking that you please take a moment to share this. Uh, and while you are sharing this, we are also just gonna give you an update. We wanna give a shout out to our RBI um, baseball program here in the Department of Recreation. They had their opening day yesterday at Brush Field with over 120 participants um, from five teams participating so far in RBI basketball, uh, I mean, baseball. And um, so someone asked me, how do we share this? You just go on my Facebook page, Mayor Sean Patterson Howard, and you just hit share. You could share it to your page. You can share it to groups. Um, so you share this through Facebook. We're live on Facebook. And then we also want to give a shout out to our Mount Vernon elite um, AAU basketball travel team. They traveled out to Ohio this weekend. They were not successful in this tournament, but our young people did travel out to Ohio and they represented Mount Vernon well. You don't always have to come home with the chip in order to feel like you did something good. So we want to thank our Mount Vernon elite basketball team for representing Mount Vernon. So we have here tonight and we're gonna bring them on camera and we're just gonna get this conversation started right away. We have here tonight with us, um, Henry Tug Terry. He is the program director for SNUG, which is gun spelled backwards. He is with the Family Services of Westchester. We have our councilman, Derek Thompson, who is the public safety chair for the city council here in Mount Vernon. We have um, our coach, Lamont Radcliffe, who uh, is the deputy commissioner of baseball, I believe here in the city of Mount Vernon. And he also works with DPW as one of our lead sanitation workers. And we have our coach, Coach um, D, Dwayne Murray, and he is with the Junior Knights basketball program here in Mount Vernon, as well as one of the assistant coaches for the Mount Vernon High School basketball team. Um, unable to join us um, tonight because they have some other obligations right now, or Danilio Hutchinson, but he works with our high school basketball team as well. He's probably watching. And then our coach Sparks, who is the um, head coach and Coach Dindy, they're the head coaches for the Mount Vernon High School Knights um, varsity and JV basketball teams. Um, but right now we kind of really want to just get into this conversation. Um, back in the beginning of May, we had a homicide. Anthony Boyd Jr. Um, was killed here in Mount Vernon. He uh, sustained gunshots to the chest and he was um, killed here in Mount Vernon. It was very devastating to his family, 17 years old, Mount Vernon High School student scheduled to graduate this year. And then last night, um, you know, at about one in the morning over on 14th and 1st, we had two of our young men who were also um, involved in a violent accident. We had one that was shot, which is our Tommy Guest, who is a graduating senior who is a defensive starter on our Mount Vernon High School football team. And, and just for those people who um, want to be quick to judge, Mr. Guest is an honor student. He is receiving a full scholarship, a full academic scholarship to Stony Brook. Um, he plays the piano, he plays the flute, he plays the guitar, he draws. Um, he is, he's very well-rounded, he is a leader. He was the prom king um, just a few weeks ago. And then we also have um, Jared Collins, who is a rising junior. He's going into his junior year. He's also a starter on our um, Mount Vernon Knights football team. And he is also an honor student, a skateboarder, 
uh, a leader in the community involved in so many things. And far too often, often when we hear of young black men who are involved um, and who are victims of violent crime in, in, in urban communities, we automatically make assumptions that they were involved in some type of negative activity, that they were standing on the corner, that they were doing negative things. And this is just not the case. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that I let people know who these young men are. Um, and even if they were someone who was standing on the corner, that doesn't mean that they, they deserve to get shot, but this is not the case with them. And so I wanted to kind of um, give people an understanding of who we're talking about tonight. And I wanna start off with, I'm gonna start off with our councilman, Derek Thompson, and then I wanna jump down to our program director, um, Mr. Henry Terry of SNUG. Um, because Derek, you are the public safety chair for the city council. You are a lifelong Mount Vernon resident. You are the crisis intervention um, coordinator and specialist over at Edward Williams um, Elementary slash middle school because it's K through eight now. Uh, and, and you've had your own personal experience. Your family has had their own personal experience and loss of a loved one um, to gun violence here in Mount Vernon. So I, I wanna just um, move this over to you so you can kind of share with us some of your thoughts about what's going on in our community. Um, and let's talk about what we're doing to address it. Because while we may not be on Facebook constantly typing what we're doing, we are doing things here in the city of Mount Vernon to address this issue. So I'm gonna start with you, Councilman. Yes, you know, it, it's just sad. Um, I'm, I thank you for having this forum uh, tonight, but it's just sad that we have to constantly have these kinds of dis um, discussions, right? And this is like an ongoing thing. And as the weather continues to get warm, we're going to continuously see not only in this community, but other communities with this violence that has to stop. And, and I always say my favorite word is accountability. And, and we have to start holding our loved ones and our friends accountable uh, for their behavior. We know uh, who the gangbangers are. We know who the violent persons are, but we don't say anything. And then we act as if we're so outraged when it hits home. You know, they're like, oh, well, this is this. And it, it, just, it just gets under my skin so bad because a lot of these things could be uh, prevented just with a mere conversation. And, and I, I thank God that, that these two young men, um, you know, who were targeted for some reason, uh, didn't lose their lives. I'm, I'm so grateful for that. But Mount Vernon, we have so much work to do because this should never happen uh, in Mount Vernon. And we have so many discussions going back and forth with uh, how we can prevent it. And, and everyone on, on screen today is doing their part, but we need everyone in their households to do their part as well. When you know your, your loved ones are out there doing things in the neighborhood that are, are not beneficial to the neighborhood, have a conversation with them. And I always say, if you're not ha if you're not comfortable having that conversation with them, reach out to Henry Terry and, 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 and Coach Dwayne and myself and the mayor, or find somebody else who can be um, that, that arbitrator or that medium for you to have that conversation. But those conversations need to be had so we don't experience our uh, lives lost as the weather warms up and and people are just out there uh, running amok it's just it's it's just a sad shame that we have to constantly go through this when it could be prevented uh you know but we we've, we've been working along with with the schools to to get some resolve with the youth borough with the recreation department and 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 community leaders alike we've been doing so much trying to get our community to come together but you you still have a, a few bad apples out there who want to spoil the bunch uh but we, we're trying to weed out those bad apples and, and get them the help they need and if they don't want to be helped we're going to hold them accountable for their actions uh because this is not going to be tolerated in Mount Vernon. absolutely and you know i just want to say because i i did speak to um you know i've been speaking to mr and mrs boyd um, after we lost Anthony and, you know, we attended the funeral. I know um, Councilman Thompson was with me. I met with Miss Boyd this week, uh, this past week here in my office. And, you know, clearly she, she as a mother is devastated. 
um, because who would not be? And, and as parents, we always sit back and we look and think, what else could we have done different? Could we have done more as community leaders? We look to see what else we can do different. What can we do more? Um, you know, some people say more police, but if we have police on every corner, if we have cameras on every corner, that still doesn't necessarily stop it and prevent it. Um, you know, so, so there are, there's a lot of frustration in our community. and There's a lot of fear in our community, you know, and there's a lot of finger pointing in our community. Um, but the question is, how are we going to come together for the benefit of our young people and, and make sure that we're creating safe places and safe spaces and making sure that they have an option. Um, I spoke to Kenyatta and Jay because Jared, that's their baby, that's their son. So, you know, I spoke to Miss Juanita because she's raising Tommy and, and, and had a conversation with her. So we are talking, we are praying. Um, I want to say that both young men are going to make it. Tommy was uh, shot in the buttocks. Jay was not, I mean, Jared was not shot at all, but he ran and um, tried to jump over something and fell and ended up breaking his femur. So they are both getting the medical attention that they need. Their families are with them and caring for them. And right, right now, Mount Vernon, our responsibility is to pray. But more importantly, our responsibility is if you know something, then you have to let us know what you know. Because if people continue to feel like they can get away with shooting, taking a life, moving around this community with guns, then that's what they're going to do. Um, and, and so it is a community effort along with the city effort to bring um, safety back into our community and bring it back online. Mr. Henry Terry of Snug, this, this is your job. This is what you do every day, um, all day. So we really want to hear from you right now. Uh, good evening, Madam Mayor. Um, the rest of the board, I salute you all. Um, I salute anybody and everybody who is taking a, a stand and dealing with um, this, this senseless gun violence that our, our children are, uh, they're, they're victims of. Um, and, and it's just due to years of complex trauma built up from generation to generation. And um, people need to understand that violence is not, a, it's not an act. Um, it's actually a disease and it grows. It grows and it spreads. And that's what it's doing, it's growing and it's spreading. Um, these two young men, like you said, they're not involved in any um, high risk activities, none. Yet they, they were the victims of this last shooting. Incident. And then I keep telling people to please get involved. Like you, you, you cannot keep saying, um, did you hear what happened to their kid? Did you hear what happened to their nephew? Mount Vernon is a city of families that are intertwined. Everybody is somebody else's cousin. Either we done married some, to another family, we done, we done had babies with another family, and, and, and the, the family roots of Mount Vernon, they just run so deep and they're all locked in because we all have a cousin in one of these families, all of us. The councilman, myself, the mayor, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we all have a, a relative in common. Every single one of us. Lamont, Coach, somebody in Mount Vernon that, that's related to you is related to somebody else. And we have to stop viewing things as their kid or that kid and start viewing it as our kid because that's what it is. Every time one of these babies get, get hit, get hurt, um, it's our kid. It's not their kid. That kid belongs to Mount Vernon. That kid belongs to you. And that's what people have to start understanding and start uh, uh, putting in their mind and have that mindset. And people keep saying that they want change, but they keep doing the same exact thing. Like, like Councilman Thompson said, nothing. You can't cry for change, be in position to, to, to help make change and then sit on your hands because now you're a part of the problem. I don't, I don't I don't know what to say, Madam Mayor, other than I'm completely at my wits end. Um Are you sound? We, 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 we have a team in Yonkers um that that I have to reach out to so that we can work together to try to um resolve this issue. Um there was there was a shooting 
in Yonkers, um, and you know, alleged alleged those 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 shooters were some of our babies. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Those shooters were were some of our babies. So some of those same mothers that are out the window or, or on the phone talking about what their kids did and what those kids did. Your kids are outside shooting people. And now their actions have caused someone else's child to be shot. So you are involved. You do need to say something. You, you do need to make sure that you, you're going and checking your son's room. You, you, de you do need to make sure that you're going to see what's in his closet. You, de you do need to make sure that you're, you're monitoring everybody that he brings in your home. There shouldn't be a kid in your home if you don't know his name, you don't know his mom. And there's no way that you live in Mount Vernon and there's a kid that come to your house and you don't know his mom or his daddy or somebody. You know what I mean? Like we, we really have to start checking our kids and, and, and not just our kids because some of our kids are now somebody's mama or somebody's daddy. But they're just in that cycle of, of trauma and reliving their lives the same way that their parents did. And you got babies raising babies who don't know how to raise a baby because they've never been completely raised themselves. Like this is an illness, this is a sickness, this is a disease. And we as a people, we have to work together to treat it, plain and simple. So, so Jay Collins, he just um, put up a post real quick, a comment um, under Kenyatta said, this is Jay Collins. Our youth are yearning for support. This should have never happened to my son or my nephew. And Jay, I totally agree with you. Um, like you said, these are young men who were doing everything that they were supposed to do. They were doing everything right, involved in football, um, honor roll students, full academic college scholarships, involved in music and arts, um, leaders and, and, you know, here they are walking home, walking home for an, from an event, minding their business. And even as I spoke to their family members, they said it's very rare that they even allow them to walk anywhere or walk home. Um, but this time they said, okay, no problem. You, you kind of went to an, uh, after prom or, or, you know, this is prom season. And so when everyone's doing these end of the school year parties and they were attending an end of the school year party, and I'm not saying it was a school based party. So no one from the school district starts saying this wasn't school sanctioned, but they, this is the time of year that our young people are celebrating as they're finishing school, as they're graduating, as friends are turning 18. And here they are walking home, just walking mm -hmm. home. And, and, you know, someone pulls up on them, ask questions and start shooting. This should not be. This should not be. I want to bring know, Madam Mayor, if I may, you know, I, and our young, the, the young men are going to be traumatized from what happened to them. Right. And, and it's just so sad. And like I said, I'm, I'm glad that, that they survived this, but they're going to have trauma dealing with this. And, and, you know, and the sad thing is when, when we have our young people perish, um, from gun violence, not only are you hurting that family, but you're hurting your family. Because mm -hmm. when you have to serve time, you're hurting your family in the process. And now you've taken away a life in other instances, and you're hurting that family. That family is going through trauma for decades. And th these are hard situations to get over. And people don't realize that the acts that they carry out has an impact on many people um, who weren't even at the scene, but it it just impacts them for decades and it's, it's traumatizing for the community and it has to stop. You know, earlier this year, we had a conversation with um, four of our young men in Mount Vernon who had all committed homicide before the age of 18 and each of them had done 25 years or more and finally were returning to you know the community and they spoke about those impulsive decisions they spoke about just kind of trying to impress their friends or doing something that they didn't think about um, but their friends weren't sending them care packages. Their friends weren't visiting them in jail. It was their mamas. It was their family members. You know, so like you said, not only is the family of the person who is a victim who was shot um, suffering, but the family of the person who did the shooting is suffering. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to get your life back. Um, yeah. even, even when you go to jail and come out and, and 
all of the regret, the regret that they live with. Um, but unfortunately, this is something that our young people are not thinking about in, in the middle of impulse. And I'm going to jump over to Lamont and Dwayne and Arthur, but I have to say this because we keep talking about our young people, but our young people are taking their cues from grown. And you know, I want to cuss right now, but I can't because right. my pastor will be pissed. Right. But grown I want to ask people. That's I'll, right. Yes. Thank you for saying it for me. They that's they're taking their cues from grown 40 year old standing on the corner, drinking a 40, shooting dice, talking trash, and in your 40s and 50s, making little punk ASS videos about Murderville. Really? And and some of the same people who are on Facebook as these Facebook warriors who talk about the shooting in Mount Vernon are some of the same people who was sharing these lame behind wannabe video gangster stuff calling Mount Vernon Murderville. Like when did we become Murderville? And even if we have some homicides, why are you trying to get your weight up on the street with some punk video talking about Murderville and we moving like that? And, and that's an example to our young people. So we got to stop acting like it's our young people's fault because they're taking wrong cues from grown people who want to be something, who was never nothing, honestly, but a little punk wing in the first place. And, they, and they're trying to impress these young boys on the block nice. and pushing them to do stupid things. And, and, and we got to stop it. We got to stop it. Like you said, this isn't just our young people's fault. These are some grown people who are running around here trying to get some little boys to come up under their wing and trying to impress them and make them feel that this is the way to go. And they never had the heart to do any of this. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to bring this over. Thank you, Minister Arthur Muhammad, for coming in. I know that you are, are, are moving. Can I pull him in? Because he's in the car right now. And I just want to make sure that we, we get him into this conversation. Well, thank you very much and peace and blessings to the esteemed panel uh, of Mount Vernon Knights in the house. Certainly, I know the two young men that were shot at. I'm, I'm not sure if they were shot. I've been in New York City all day. I listened to my good brother, Brother Henry Terry, talk about how violence is a disease. And if I may, I'd like to even take it a step further. I think that what, what the disease is, is the lack of knowledge of self. What the disease is, is the hood culture, the way hood culture is lived today. See, violence is the symptom of the disease of 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 just straight hood life, the gutty gullah. Uh, it's almost as if we glorify the hood and shooting is just a byproduct of murderville. And what happens is, is we have to take the hood out of the neighbor and put the neighbor in the hood. We, I mean, again, I'm going to call the God card. God is not present when in the hood anymore. Where Satan is present, Satan rules. Satan is ruling money earning Mount Vernon because there's, you know, whenever you can take 5% of the population and make 95% of the people scared, that means that, that, that the 95% has relented the good and we have given. I love this calling people together and doing things because we have to make a concerted effort to get a conscious cadre of people and continue to push this message of love, of peace. I'm saying that, you know, uh, someone said, I think it was Councilman Thomas said that, you know, these young men will be traumatized. Anytime they see a gun, this incident will be re-stimulated. You know, they, they, these are two young men who, who whose parents were overcomers. You know what I'm saying? And so I hate it. Um, I hate hood life because hood life, it used to be good life because we had the neighbors in the hood. But right now it's gangster life. We trying to we trying to we trying to be like Chicago. We trying to be like L.A. This is Mount Vernon. And what happens is, is that we got to stand up and man up. And it's like the only time people really speak on it is when people die. But whenever you carry a gun. You hold the responsibility that that there's a potentiality for a murder to occur. Whenever you hold the gun, whoever has a gun, you are a potential murderer given the circumstance. And the reality is this, you know, to join many gangs, you got to do what? You got to slash somebody. You got to beat somebody. 
you got to shoot somebody. That's negative. And until we say to ourselves that hood life, the way it's constituted now, that's a disease because it's producing nothing good for the community. And, and you know, like you said, you have to come together and you have to be willing to be part of the solution. And, you know, back in the second week of May, we started bringing together people um, to talk about how we're going to make a difference in our community. And I reached out to our police department. You know, since we came in, we put together a violent crime unit that's taken 130 some odd guns off the street since January of 2020. Um, we put our um, our cold case squad back together, but it's hard to solve old murders, especially when people in the community will no, not cooperate and give information. And we know sometimes that people have information, but no one wants to talk, but we all want these murders to be solved. Uh, but, but we know this can't just be done by the police department. So in speaking with the police department, they recognize the same thing. We put something together called CORES and it stood for community, organization, resources, and environmental solutions. Um, you know, and community, community is all of us. Organizations are organizations like the Nation of Islam, the ATF, SNUG, basketball teams, community, you know, neighborhoods, block associations, resources, the mental health, the job training, um, the trauma-informed care, the churches, and environmental solutions. When we talk, people said, well, why, why environmental solutions? Environmental solutions is because the surroundings that we have in our community does impact our mentality. And so when you're living in a neighborhood with a lot of litter, when you're living in a neighborhood when people just feel comfortable throwing you know, garbage on the ground and our children are walking through dirty neighborhoods and, and it's not the children oftentimes that's throwing stuff on the street again, it's the adults. When you know we're just putting, um, we're dumping, we're dumping garbage into the neighborhoods then that means you don't respect your neighborhood. That means you don't respect yourself. And so when we talk about environmental solutions, we're talking about cleaning up your neighborhood. We're talking about learning how to respect your neighborhood um, and becoming involved in your neighborhood. And so that's what CORS is. And we have over a hundred community organizations and people who are coming together, who are starting to walk the streets, who are putting together a list of activities um, you know, really to start reaching out into the community. And so I want to pull our Coach D, because you've been coming to these meetings um, since we started. And like you said, Coach D, you, you got tired of coming to meetings where people were just talking over and over again about what the problem was, but they weren't sticking around to help develop the solutions. So, you know, talk about some of what you're seeing because you're working with our young people every day. Thank you, um, Commissioner Scott. Commissioner Scott is on vacation and, and is doing some housework and yard work, but he jumped on um, because this is an important conversation. So thank you, Commissioner Scott. But we want to just pull in our Coach D real quick to have um, to be a part of this conversation. Yeah, thank you. Um, but before I start, obviously, our best wishes and prayers to the, the two young men and their family, because trauma is going to be a huge issue going forward for not just the young men, but the family as well. And I just want to give a little shout out to Nas Duncan, because I know this is a tough time for her right now. This is around the time when she lost Junior. So, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to give her like a, another, another, another where, you know, she's in our thoughts and whatever. But for me, um, I'm going to be really honest here. I was like a lot of people who it was just staying in their lane. You know, I was just coaching and and then I would hear about a, a, a violence to one of our youths. And of course, I would be upset, but, you know, I was just staying in my lane. I was just coaching and what have you. But then it came home. It came home in the, in the form of Samoya McKenzie. And Samoya McKenzie, obviously, everybody knows about what happened to Samoya McKenzie, but there was two bad things that happened that day in terms of the junior nights where it made me start to change the way about wanting to be more involved. The first thing, obviously, is the bullet that hit Shemoy. Obviously, that, that changed all our lives. But in terms of what we do, in terms of working with young people, it was the person that pulled the trigger was a former junior knight. That hit me hard. Mm -hmm. Because, because first of all, he had a promise. He had promised he could have, if we would have just kept a little closer eye on him or whatever, 
he had promised to become a basketball player to go for that dream of being a Mount Vernon basketball player. And so that was a double hit for us and the coaches where who take it seriously about our, our trying to help young kids. And, you know, we're at a time now where, you know, if you're, if you're a sports director, a, a director of a youth uh, program, or if you're a coach, you have to have a mental health professional um, um, as far as their, their, their contact information in your phone nowadays, because these things happen way too often. That tells you exactly how bad it's gotten. And of course, it really hit home when we finally got mental uh, uh, health people um, involved. Uh, but, uh, Patrice Moore got us some of our mental health professionals. And there was a young young man that played for us. His name is Kassan Tracy. And all the parents and all the kids were there. And he came up and he said, he said, Coach, Shamoya did everything right. She was an honor student. She was great in church. She did all of that. How are we supposed to feel now? That's when it really hit home for me. Because then I knew, okay, we're really in a major problem. Because we're losing the confidence of our, our youth. They don't, they're not sure if we're able to do anything. So I'm going to channel Dave, Sergeant David Clark right now. And in that first meeting that the mayor was talking about, Toward the end, he got up, he walked over to the door, and he said, real simple, if we don't ask ourselves the hard questions, and if we don't try to find and answer those hard questions with some answers, we're going to continue to do the same thing over and over again. And a lot of it comes to effort. You know, you, you know, whatever effort we do, you can't just do, and I know this might be coach speak, you can't decide, you know, I'm going to raise my arm. Usually there's a, it's a, it's a component that goes with effort. It's called determination. The city of Mount Vernon, all and, and not just you know, say Mount Vernon did a great thing yesterday and said that how they they they, they want to work apart uh, along with Mount Vernon Proud and try to get things together, which is a great thing because we've been doing our own things too long and it's time for us to get together about this. But the reality the reality is is that hey, we have to have some hard, hard questions here, and it's not going to be nice. It's not going to be nice, and and until we do. The malaise is going to take over, and everything that Brother Arthur Muhammad said, everything that Henry Terry said, everything that you said, Mayor, and everything that Council Thompson said regarding what's happening as far as everybody else is not going to happen, and it's going to continue to, to have our youth believe that we can't get nothing done, not on this virus, that they're not safe. When Samoy was killed, Mayor Tom, uh, Thomas went in there, and the, those girls on that basketball team told him flat out. They are not, they don't feel safe. It's all of our jobs as Mount Vernon Knights to decide quickly whether or not we're going to get in this fight or we're going to have more human life lost at the hands of someone who's on the other side of a gun. And we got to find, we got to find the time to make the time to become involved. Everyone is busy. But when something like this happens, everyone has time to sit and start talking about what should have been done and what could have been done. But the question is, what are each of us doing? It is not one person. This is a community effort. When you see a mother who is working two jobs or parents who are struggling with their baby, you know, with their young person, are we reaching out to them or are we giving them the side eye and talking about how their bad child is running around in the street? You know, you know, what are we doing to reach out to people before it becomes an issue? We see our young people failing in school, you know, because a lot of these kids that are out here involved, like you said, once they get caught, we, we go back and say, oh, when did they turn? Oh, in ninth grade, 10th grade, their grades started failing. They, they stopped coming to school. What interventions are we doing from school to after high school, you know, all throughout? Like you said, these are not, this is 5% of the community sometimes that is doing the most damage. So if we really get our hands wrapped around, we, that's what SNUG does. That's what SNUG does. I, I've been trained in SNUG for 12 years. And what SNUG does is identify those who um, have been shot, those who are my, most likely to shoot, those who are involved in criminal activity, um, those who have been incarcerated, those who are under some type of community supervision, and those who are at high risk between a certain age group. So they've identified, we all know for the most part who are the high risk people who are high risk for shooting or being shot. 
Um, unfortunately, like these three young people, these latest three cases, Shamoya and different cases, these were not young people who were on their radar. These are random acts of violence. But when you catch the people, these are young people who have been on our radar. So what are we doing and how can we reach out to them to show them a different way? And, and um, Madam Mayor, if I could say one last thing, if, if, if it's at that first meeting, there was a gentleman by the name of Brother Amir Muhammad. And he said something that I still haven't forgotten, which is that we need to do a better job of teaching young men and young women how to be young men and young women. That there needs to be some type of curriculum through the churches, through the, um, the, the mosques, through the temples, whatever, where we all the clergy come together and say, hey, listen, let's give, if we have to give a course on how to be a young man and a young woman, because it, it's got to get that deep. I don't, we've tried this now. We've talked about being together for many years. We've talked about all, all these things before. It may have to be a little deeper and I'm not too sure. Actually, I'm sure that that might be a good way to start. Absolutely. And, and that's what he said. And I know Minister Arthur is there and, and um, Brother Muhammad, who you were speaking about as a former Mount Vernon police officer. He's, um, you know, works with Minister Arthur and the nation. Um, but we talked about having that manhood and that womanhood curriculum. And it's not about whether or not it comes through the nation or the Baptist church or the Pentecostal church or the, you know, whatever, but that we're all coming together and putting together a curriculum that we can agree on because it's not who gets credit for it. It's the fact that we're saving the lives of our young people and young men and women who are crying out for our help. So I'm going to bring in Lamont and then we're going to drop on down to our commissioner, Scott, um, and if you're I'm not sorry, sure, Madam Mayor, can I interject for just one second? Yes, sir. Um, th those things do need to be in place, right? But um, being a young man today, being a young woman today is different from when I was a young man, different from when you was a young lady. And, and, and in order for us to put anything together or any type of curriculum together or anything forward for these young people, these young people need to be involved in putting that together because only they know and understand what it is to be a young man and a young woman today. So don't, they need to be a part of the plan. We keep, and I, I, when I say we, I just mean us as a whole. We keep putting together all of these plans and all these projects for them, but, but, but not including them in the process. So if they're not included in the process, is it really for them? And that, that, that's, that's what our, our biggest problem is. Um, it's not that you know there, there aren't people in place that wanna help. There aren't people in place that are trying to do things. But you can't do it or, or, or put it together or, or, or make it happen without them, because only they understand what it is to be a young man and a young woman today. We don't understand what it is. The time is completely different. The so language like is we, completely different. Everything is different now than it was when we were growing up. And, and so that's one of the reasons that we're doing the forum that we're doing tomorrow um, with the Teen Summit um, at 7, 7 p.m. at the Mount Calvary uh, CME Church. Tomorrow we're having a Teen Summit and we're going to hear from the teens. And we need to know from them what it is that we need so that we can provide exactly what they tell us that, that they need and not what we think um, we've observed them needing. And so, it's, it's the same conversation that we have when we're talking about Black Lives Matter and everyone talks mm -hmm. about what the Black community needs. And so right. it says, not about us without us, right? Exactly. It can't be about us without us. So it's the same thing. It can't be about the young people if the young people are not involved. It's not about building it and they will come. It's a part of them building it, them feeling empowered. They're a part of it. And then they're going to go out and promote it and push it. So definitely. So tomorrow, what time at, at Mount Calvary again? Tomorrow at 7 p.m., Mount Calvary CME Church, 38 South uh, 2nd Avenue. Our moderator will be Cynthia Turnquist-Jones. And um, she she was chosen to moderate because she she doesn't have blinders on. Absolutely. And, and, and she's, she, she, she knows and understands the importance of these young voices being heard and these young feelings being expressed and these young emotions being expressed, but from these young, young, young people, period. So she walks this life. The time is 7 p.m. 7, 7 p.m. tomorrow evening, um, Mount Calvary CME Church, 38 South 2nd Avenue, full team and this, summit. And Everyone this is about, about our young people. This is this about, about our young, our young people. people. This, this is, is not, not about, about anybody running for office. talking. 
Exactly. This is about the young people, what the young people are experiencing, what the young people are, are feeling at nighttime when no one is around. Um, the young people not having anybody that they feel that they can go to in, in a trusted space. And, and, and what these young people want to see in place for themselves, not what we want to see for them. The and, young now, and now, Henry, you know, being that you provided the information, everybody who has a child who heard that message needs to get their children over there. Everybody, because, you everybody. Know, it's, it's just when we were kids, we didn't have a choice. Your mother said you're going to church, you're going to Bible study, you're going to after school. There was no choice. You got your tail over there because they said that's where you need to be. So there's exactly. going to be a summit tomorrow. So if you have a young person in your house, you need to have them over at that summit and, and start seeking the help you need before it's too far gone. You have and to right. also, you also tune this into it on nothing, Facebook. This means nothing if the young people are not there. If this, exactly. this summit is a, a bunch of choir members, meaning the conscious choir that wants to... Uh, uh, violence to go away, but there's not the people who we can intervene in their spirit and, and, and motivate them, hear from them, encourage them. It makes no difference. So if you're in the sound of the voice, bring your child. Even if your child is not a high flyer, they may be influenced by high flyers. The key is when these young men got shot, there's somebody that's giving the shooters high five. See, see, half of the community is outraged, and then half of the community is congratulating them for putting in some work. We got to touch hearts. We got to touch minds. That's why I salute you, Brother shot. Henry, for the work that you do. But guess what? Even though Mount Vernon is only four square miles, we cannot affect. There's over 80,000 people. So, so let's just say the 5% of 80,000 is 400 people, right? We got to get to the minds into the hearts because a, a bad heart in a bad mind or a negative heart in a negative mind is more likely to shoot when they have low emotional intelligence when they get frustrated when they feel this when there's a misperception see these things are all uh, uh um symptoms of a disease called self-hatred lack of knowledge of self and 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 low love for your people. You can't say you love people, your people, if you're willing to shoot your people. You got to see God in your people. If you see God in your people, God in yourself, then you'll find another way to settle your difference. And in this case, there was no difference. These young brothers was walking home. There was no beef. No so beef. this was just a glory shooting. They get no love in the hood for shooting these two young brothers. No love. No love. So Lamont? Yes, good evening, everyone. I just really, it's just sad, man, to keep hearing this over and over and over. It's like a unwritten unwritten book, but it is very much written um, as far as like these senseless gun play violence, whatever, the clout, whatever. You know, it's just sad, like, you know, but um, like, I feel like it's not a, it's not enough male mentors in our city. It's not enough because as a kid growing up on the South side, we was always labeled as a statistic to either going to jail, um, getting killed, but a lot of us made it and a lot of us didn't, you know, so you definitely have a choice, the road you want to lead in, in life. And I feel like as a, as a kid, when I would walk up the street, there will always be an older guy on the corner, whether they was doing dirt or not. They would always be on us as kids saying, hey, make sure you get your butt home at a safe time. What are you doing up here? And we don't have that. They think it's cool. A 50, 50 year old. I'm 43. We got 50 year old guys standing on the corner with a with a 16 year old, 15 year old. That's their big homie. I mean, and that's that's just the sad part about it. And things just have to change. You know, I got over a hundred kids in baseball, man. And just seeing them, seeing them as, as young as they are, like, I want to see them succeed in life. You know, I know, I know we can say we need to get them young, but we need to get some of these older guys need to be mentored, you know, because it's definitely not about the gun violence. Like back in the days we used to fight, we'll fight and then we'll make up the next day or the two minutes later. We never tried to resort to guns. Yes. We had have, had um gun violence as at younger ages because i've 
known a lot of people that died not even seeing the age of 16. But, I mean, I just don't understand why would you resort to a gun because that's not the only option. Like sports, read a book, go get a job, find a girl, get a wife, you know, like just – it's just it's just sad, man, because Mount Vernon, we're always in the negative, and it's time to turn it to a positive. But we all, like Brother Terry said, Henry Terry said, we need the young voice in. We can't speak for them. We got to understand how they feel, um, what, what, do, what do they think need to be done, you know, because it's really they're, it's really they're, they're going to set the tone for the next generation. We're trying to set the tone for their generation. I feel like they'll set the tone for the next generation, you know, and it's just sad, man. And I'm, I'm all prayers up for the victims. Thank God that they didn't get hurt severely, but nobody wants to go through that, man. That's trauma. And I could just imagine my three boys going through that. Like, and that's just like, it just hurts. It hurts inside because when you try to do something good and those brothers are on good paths, you know, that could have been one of ours, same path, you know, but, it's a lot of ignorance, and that's what we we have to fight. We have to fight the ignorance. You're muted. You're muted, madam. I see it. I'm sorry. So, Lamont, you have three sons. How old are your sons? 15, 11, and 7. All right. You have three sons. You're married. You work a full-time job, some overtime. You're doing heavy labor because right. you're on a sanitation truck. Right. So right. your body's physically tired. Definitely. You're trying to be the father to three of your own sons, trying to be a husband and do those things. So, sir, what makes you, what made you decide to volunteer as a baseball coach? You know, you could easily say, I got three boys of my own. I'm married. I'm working a hard physical labor job. I don't have time for this. Right. You know, but what makes you get up and about how many hours a week are you putting in to volunteering to help some of our young people? Well, you know, you know, a lot of a lot of kids down there. I see a lot of single moms. So it's like they need that male mentorship. They need that male to give them some type of guidance. So I grew a liking to it. My son is 15. He started playing at five years old, but I'm an ex baseball player. I'm an ex night coach D, you know basketball, baseball, you know, we played it all, but um, I grew up underneath guys like Victor Flack. Like, you know, Victor Flack, he was like one of my, like one of my mentors, you know, like looking up to him as, and then I see these kids and running up to me saying, coach, 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 that just keeps me warm and keeps me bringing, bringing myself, giving myself the energy. I don't, like today I was out there, I didn't have the energy, but as soon as I stepped on that field with those young kids, it gave me so much energy and joy, and I know this is what they need, you know. So, so starting them young, getting them on the right path, you know, that's what I'm here for, you know. Thank you. I, I mean, I just needed to say that because it's easy to say I don't have enough time. And and what I said during opening day yesterday, you don't have to be the head coach. You could be a position coach. You can be a position coach. You can be somebody just comes down and you sit in the stand at the games and cheer for these kids. You may not have a kid on the team or any kids at all, but you're just someone who every time they have a home game, they know Mr. Jones or Mr. You know Jefferson or whoever is going to be in the stand. And, and and they might come down with some waters to give to the kids. And and sometimes it's as simple as that. Volunteering and being involved doesn't mean giving up your whole life. It just means giving a little bit of your time. It means pushing away from a TV for just a little while, pushing away from the computer just for a little while to sow into the life of a young person. That's, that's what it means. So Commissioner Scott, thank you so much for coming on. Like I said, I know you are on vacation, you are on break, but you you are really busy getting some things together since you haven't had a vacation in almost two years. Um, so thank you for coming on. And if you could just share some of, you know, share your heart, not just what the police is doing, but share some of your heart. Okay. What I would like to say is this, um, I spent about 30 years of my life in policing, whether it was a local level or training from the FBI and other federal agencies like the uh, Marshal Service, and I was blessed with having a substantial career. What has happened is that I have realized that policing by itself is not the 
solution. We cannot control murders. We cannot control the violent crime on the streets without the community being involved. Now, the mayor mentioned that we had uh, created a cause program, community oriented resources and environmental services. And it means much more than just what the acronym stand for. We are involving every stakeholder in the city, SNUG, community activists, clergy, the nation of Islam. Uh, my connection was Amit Muhammad, who was talking about bringing in the programs that Coach Dwayne was talking about uh, as far as um, self-esteem with families and training men to be men and bringing back the structure of families and also job development and everything else. So those were very positive conversations. And he was just looking for a space in Mount Vernon to establish himself. So uh, Brother Muhammad, I know that you're going to help us with that. So um, the, the engagement the police department has had so far has been spectacular because the police and the fire department has been rivals for years. Now we partnered with the fire department and we found that so much de-escalation happens when the fire department blocks off a street versus the police department blocking off a street. We're also going to ask for the stakeholders in Mount Vernon, the business people, to try to do some on-the-job training for our children in Mount Vernon. Okay, and get some jobs and making money off the city. Let's get, let them give back. We're partnering with the veterans. We're partnering with the deacons. We're partnering with the grandparents, the PTAs, parole, probation, FBI, DEA, ATF. These are all stakeholders in Mount Vernon. They all come in and they establish themselves, building a reputation off of Mount Vernon, and they need to be fully committed into Mount Vernon, giving us resources back. We um, have recently worked on a police wellness uh, program because if the cops aren't happy and if they're burnt out, they're not gonna be able to serve the community properly. They need to have their own mental health issues taken care of also. We've built in partnerships with um, the feds with GIVE, which is a gun intervention violence intervention program to reduce violent crime in the city. And our numbers under GIVE, which also sponsors SNUG, have been phenomenal. While other cities have had substantial increases, sometimes 500% increases in shootings and violence, Mount Vernon has some very negligible increases. Yeah. You know, we have issues in Mount Vernon that also are rare and do not reflect upon other municipalities because Mount Vernon PD has no funds for cars, no funds for, say, uh, recruitment, no funds for essentials to run the department that other departments take for granted. And we, we deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis with, as I tell the mayor, and she says we do all the time, working more with less. And no other city has these constraints. Um, I've been criticized because um, they say that the, the, the city does not know all the accomplishments that the police department has done in the last year, year and a half. And I'm focusing on the, the new city website that's happening so that we can get more information out to the public on a day-to-day -day basis. Because when people say uh, Mount Vernon is a Afghanistan or whatever, and they gotta realize that we're at the same level of violence that we were last year. And we have an actual reduction in the amount of people that have been shot. Okay, and there's also a reduction in the homicides. But the perception is the violence is getting worse, but we've actually had a 20% decrease in violence. So, but it's, um, 
any, you know, people get upset by any level of, of shooting. So we, we have had one homicide, I think, in the community this year compared to six or seven at this time last year. And so we've definitely had a decrease in homicides. Um, but, you know, one is scary. Um, you know, shootings and shots fired um, are another thing. And, and whether people are hit or not, people, you know, understandably get, get upset about that. Um, and they should. We we don't want any. You know, it, it's great to say that we're down 20 percent. I'd love to be able to say that we're down 100 um, percent. But but that's not where we are right now. Um, we, right. we would love to have statistics like, you know, Scarsdale and Rye. People say, oh, this wouldn't happen in Scarsdale and Rye. But we also have people in Scarsdale and Rye who aren't going to allow, you know, loud parties in their houses. Like all of these things tie in. All of these things tie in. The dice games on 8th Avenue, the dice games on Mount Vernon Avenue, the dice games on 3rd Street. Because whenever someone is, has a dice game, you know there's hundreds, there's thousands of dollars and a gun is close by. You know, people are having the parties now in their basements, in the back of bodegas, in the back of supermarkets, and you know, all of these little hidden parties that people are having. And then they say that the police are hating on them. They're, they're saying that people are hating on them because we're shutting down these parties, but then these are the same parties that turn into drama. Right. You, you, people yes. are having pay parties in their backyards. You're having pay parties in the back of your barber shop. You're having pay parties in your, in your, not your gas stations, your auto mechanic repair things. But when we come out and we come to shut it down, there's a problem. When we come into people's neighborhoods and we tell them, turn down your music, oh, that's disrespectful. The cops are just bothering us. When we tell you to move from the corners, well, where do you want us to go? When we ask you not to drink 40s and smoke blood, in front of our babies that are playing in the playground because our children should have the right to be children, then you act like someone is sweating you and being nasty to you and you get an attitude and it's, then it's like, oh, the police are doing too much. But then as soon as we have a shooting, then everyone is saying, well, what are y'all doing? So that's what we're doing. When we come to the to the parks and tell you to move and get a move on, that's what we mean. When we're coming and telling you to pick up your dice game, there's gambling right there over at MGM. If you want to gamble, go over to MGM and rock it out with Empire Casino. But on our streets and in our neighborhoods and in our parks is not where it should be happening because all of that leads to gun violence. You trying to make money with a backyard party where you're charging people at the door, you're selling liquor and you're selling food. You you don't have a, a club. Th those things are licensed. And when we go and we write tickets or we arrest people for this type of behavior, then it's, oh, the mayor and the police department and Mount Vernon's doing too much. So Mount Vernon, we can't have it both ways. You can't be the hood and then want us to be safety. You can't sit there and brag that we're murder Vernon and Murderville and then say, oh, our babies are being shot in the street. We got to have it one way or the other. And, and we're not, we, we're not going to become a police state. We can't become a police state. That wouldn't be good either. But we have to find a balance between the police doing what they need to do and the community, the churches, the businesses, the neighborhood associations and everybody coming together to make a difference. Um, everybody can talk about what needs to happen. But my thing is, how much are you stepping up? How much are you ready to put your boots on the ground? How much are you ready to volunteer, even if it's just being a literacy coach? What are you willing to do? You may not be able to walk the streets, but can you help some of our young people learn how to read? Can can you volunteer as a Girl Scout coach? I mean, a Girl Scout leader, a troop leader, a Boy Scout troop leader. What are you willing to do? Because until all of us are willing to, to step up, we're going to continue to see what we see in our community. So we have to be willing to make a difference. Absolutely. Man, Amen. you know, uh, you hit the nail on the head. And and when we see adults on Facebook trolling and, and acting foolish and, and highlighting all the negativity that's happening in Mount Vernon, opposed to trying to highlight some most of the great things that are going on in Mount Vernon, because there's so many great things going on in Mount Vernon, but so many of our adults, these are our adults acting foolish on Facebook. They, they for some reason, they think Mount Vernon is like loving hip hop or real house pop or something. They like to keep drama going. And instead of you pointing out the problem saying, well, what is the city doing? 
your question should be what can i do to help the city and then you should be highlighting that you know girls um that, that are on facebook with the drama try to find some of these young girls and teach them how to braid teach them how to be young girls and 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 do things that young girls teach them how to hold a hoop like the girls used to do when we hopscotch and double dutch and things of that nature you know the men teach teach the kids how to cut hair and and how to how to clean themselves up and 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 you know talk to them about their their body odors and things of that nature you know try to be a mentor for them so people don't pick on them but you have so many great things that you learned growing up try to implement that in into the lives of some of the youth that are here today and that's the only way we can get our community together is being together to get it done so and, and I, also, I, I also think real quick uh to, to piggyback off of what, uh, of what derek was saying is that there's a there's also a negative impact of the community at large you know i was i was uh, talking to a friend who was talking to another friend who was trying to come you know get things done and one of the things that she said to my friend was she couldn't believe how many people actually live in mount vernon that actually have some 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 organizational skills or they have a skill that they can bring in but they choose not to because they just decided hey listen we're just going to come and live in mount vernon but our influence our money our economic power we're going to take it outside so what what the councilman is saying is that the in, that makes the impact even worse because we got so many like i didn't know that El elliot mistal who's one of the best law writers in in the world lives in mount vernon but we don't hear from them. And there's a lot of people like that who probably have made that determination. Hey, listen, I've heard all the bad stuff. I don't, I may not have heard about the good stuff, but I heard all the bad stuff. So I'm just going to live here and I'm going to take my influence and my money and take it outside. That hurts us as well. When you Google information about Mount Vernon, like is Mount Vernon a safe place to live? And Google tells you no. And, and, and I have a problem with that because how dare we allow someone else to control our narrative, right? We, we, we are a predominantly black community and, and we're one of the only black, when you go to other communities, they wish they had a black mayor, you know, black communities. They wish they had a black mayor, they wish they had a black council, they wish they had a black commissioner, black comptroller, all this, and you got all this blackness and, and, and we're not coming together to make sure that our community is the best that it needs to be. You know, we say we want resources, but instead of we creating problems opposed to solutions. And and when people identify problems, I say, okay, I hear your problems. Now, what's one of your solutions that you suggest? Because every problem that you identify, you should also come up and, and, and point out a solution that you think that we can interject that and tweak to say this is going to help us for the betterment of Mount Vernon. So we got to start controlling our narrative. We don't want to see gun violence. Start talking to your children. Our children are part of the problem. See what your child is hurting because only hurt people hurt people, right? So see what kind of hurt is going on in your child's life so we can address that. And not only our children, what hurt is going on in these adult lives uh, that they're not addressing? We hang out with them every day. And then, you know, if they're, if they're out there tweaking because they're they're, they're on coke or, or or that angel dust or whatever they're taking. We're laughing and, and have our video cameras out and things of that nature. But sit your brothers and sisters down and say, what are you going through? How can I help you? Because this, you know, life is hard enough. This is not a game. We have to be there for one another. You're not going to see me taking out my camera just because somebody's falling out or walking down the street naked and stuff like that because they're high out of their mind. No, I'm going to make sure I put something on them and try to get them the help they need because we can only change our, our narrative together. And if you're not going to be a part of the solution, you are a part of the problem. But I spoke about that, Councilman Thompson, um, in my state of the city the other day. We spoke about how Mount Vernon is an ecosystem, how we are, are you know, not neighborhoods that are woven together, cultures some work here, some live here, but we're woven together and we're going to rise together 
or we're going to fall together. And I don't think people really understand that. They're like, I like Derek, so I'm going to support him, but I don't like Dwayne, so I'm going to try and undercut him. I like Commissioner Scott, so I'm going to get with him, but I can't stand Lamont. He thinks he's that. I'm going to try and tear him down. Oh, Snug think they all of that. Let's, let's undercut them. And we spend a lot of time as, an ad as adults undercutting each other, um, you know, starting lies, whisper campaigns against people who are sitting here trying to make a difference. And what that has done is it has taken those people who have been involved in the past or who would like to be involved. And they've said, no, I'm not doing none of this. I'm not going to put myself out there to be attacked. Me and my kids are okay. We're doing fine. I'm going to mind my business. I'm going to keep my head low because as soon as you pop up and you start trying to do something positive, then people are like, oh, why are they trying to do that? They trying to run for office. Oh, they think they cute. They think they bad. Oh, oh they, you know, but, but Ali, Ali said it, Ali Evans, who's in our Office of Emergency Management, he talked about those critical C's. He talked about cooperation. He talked about collaboration. He talked about commitment. He talked about communication. I mean, we do a whole bunch of talking, but how are we collaborating? How are we cooperating? Are we communicating in a way that's positive and productive? Are we collaborating or are we saying, no, I'm going to withhold my support and let your situation fail um, so that I can come in? And so, yes, we uh, said people want to do positive and you get nasty robocalls and people like Mount Vernon News Center who just tear down the community. What's the benefit of that? Look, some people Ignore. only are some people are only relevant because of their negativity and mm -hmm. hurt people like you said hurt people and people who don't love themselves and we have enough of them here in Mount Vernon people who don't love themselves will never love you so I've told people stop sitting there and trying to audition for a piece or a portion or a role that someone's never going to give you and so while I'm the mayor of all Mount Vernon I'm not going to sit here and pay a, a whole bunch of attention to all people all they got to do is talk negative and they're talking trash. You could do that. Do whatever you want to. Build your own Mount Vernon. Build your own neighborhood. Tear me down. I don't care. I'm going to rock out with the people who want to be about something and do something. We came together and started having meetings and people's like, oh, it's not inclusive. Oh, it's not this. And then you show up, you stay for 10 minutes and then you walk out the door and we've never seen you again. So you got a lot of people with all the blah, blah, blahs and they might say what I'm saying is negative. No, but I'm going to bring it. You want to know what the mayor wants to say about violence in our community, I want to say that your nasty <laughs> mouth is violent. I want to say that your keyboard warrior is violent. Bring that same energy when you come into a room. Bring that same energy to make a difference about what's happening in Mount Vernon. If you're not the head of it, then you don't want something to be successful. And that's why we will always trip over our own feet because we get in our own way. You can't talk about the white people. The white people aren't doing this to us. We're doing it to ourselves. Yes, you have a black mayor, black city council, black school board, black trustees at the library, and we should be the black Mecca, but we're the black mess because this crabs in a barrel mentality, because this negative mentality, you say the elected officials should work together and get along, but you want to vote people in office just because they hate who's in office now, and you think we're going to work and get along? No, we're going to continue to stay where we're at because we don't know how to work together. We don't know how to heal because so many of people are so broken, and the only relevant that they have is their negativity. I said it. I'm not taking it back. There's the, when they say, she said it. Yeah, that's what I said, and I'm good with it. Call me, the mayor, call me the gangster mayor. Call me the ghetto mayor. Call me. I grew up on the hilltop. I grew up in the hip hop era. Those aren't negative things. Those are a part of who I am, but I also have the education, the credentials, and the passion to do my job. I understand both sides of the track because I've lived and I've existed on both sides of the track, but I'm here now to do the work. And if you want to do the work, there's people who are willing to do good work with you. Um, there was a question and it asked, what is the school district doing about violence? What happened to the MBK program? You know, in the next few weeks, we will be sitting down. I've been starting to have some more conversations with the superintendent and with school board trustee members. I want to give a shout out, especially to Cynthia Turnquest Jones, to Melissa Munoz Patterson. Um, why am I forgetting my Adrian other? Saunders. 
Adrian Saunders and the, the African American gentleman. He has the kids in the school. Mr. Um, Warren. 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 I, I'm sorry, Warren. I'm forgetting your last name right now. But they've been coming to our cores meetings. They've been coming and Mitchell. have Warren, Warren Mitchell. Mitchell. Warren yeah. Mitchell. They've been coming and having those. They've been participating in those conversations. I, I spoke to Superintendent Hamilton about the fact that the school district owns more property, more physical property in the city than the the city of Mount Vernon. And so, and and I know Councilman Thompson had that same question: How can we, as the community, have more access to the schools, to the gyms, to their parks, to their playgrounds? How can our not-for-profit organizations partner with the city and the school district and the recreation department and the youth bureau to do more things in the schools? It shouldn't be a competition. It's all the same taxpayer money. It's all the same children. It's all the same three zip codes. So we can't sit there and charge each other to use buildings that we've already paid taxes on. And you can't tell us that you um, have to charge us when you're not hiring extra security or cleaning people because these are people who are already working until seven o'clock. Now, if we want to run a program till nine o'clock or 12 o'clock, then let's talk about how to fund it. But the tax 63 percent of Mount Vernon taxpayer dollars go to the school district. And so we have to find a way to work together. I'm not interested in being the superintendent. I am the mayor. That's enough work to do. So this is not about taking over the school district, but the city and the school district and the not-for-profit agencies, the neighborhood associations and the churches, we all have to find a way to work together because this is the community that we have chosen to live in, work in, worship in, work, you know, do those things in, play, shop, whatever. And we have to work together together to make a better community. Um, I just want to get closing remarks from you. This is not about bashing, but we do need to talk about the hard truths. And the hard truth is that we're dysfunctional as a community because we refuse to work together for the benefit of our children. And we can't continue that way. If you continue to do the same thing, you're going to get the same results. And I don't care who sits in the mayor's chair. It could be five other people. We've had we've been talking about what hasn't worked in Mount Vernon for the last five mayors. And we can continue to talk about what the mayor's not doing for the next five mayors. But if we don't come together and do something, Mount Vernon will never change. It's not just about who sits in this chair. You can't vote for someone and then not stay involved. You have to be involved on every level. Level in Mount Vernon, more hands make for light work. We're going to close it out. Commissioner Scott, if you have closing comments. I just would like to say this was a great presentation and um, I appreciate everybody's comments that were made on here. Everybody was on point, especially you, Mayor. And um, I believe you said it all. So um, I'm very pleased. Good night. All right, thank you for the benefit of our children. Um, Lamont? Yes, I just want us to take from this panel that we had tonight um, as far as everyone chipping in. That's the key to our future, you know? Um, it takes a village. So instead of pointing the finger, let's take, take um, responsibility roll our sleeves up and hit the ground running, you know what I mean? And keep those prayers up for these young children. And I mean, let's just support each other, man. I love Mount Vernon and we got a long road ahead, but I'm willing to fight to the end. Thank you. Coach D? Yeah, Mount Vernon, uh, are you ready to answer the hard questions? I think the mayor just put some out. And when it comes to gun violence, say thoughts and prayers are nice, but uh, change in actions are better. Thank you. Um, Mr. Henry Terry. Gun violence is the number one killer of African-American and Latino men in our nation from the ages of 14 to 25. So instead of you all asking why this person or why that person is on the team, ask how you can become a part of the team. I have volunteer shirts to fit all of you, all shapes and sizes. 914-708-7226, that is my contact number. You can call that number anytime of night, morning, afternoon, midnight, day, it does not matter. 
your call will be answered and the call will be responded to. The only way to win the fight is to, to be in the fight, plain and simple. And our councilman, Derek Thompson. Yeah, thank. I like to say thank you to the entire panel, you know, because we've been working diligently to make sure we find some resolve. Uh, but I challenge the community now to to only post positive things about our our city. Make sure we control the narrative of what we want our city to look like, because our city is a reflection of us. So how are we going to better serve our city? So each one of us, uh, if you're not a part of any group. You should be identifying some time that you can allot to these associations and say, these are the hours that I can volunteer. This is what I can bring to the table. This is what I would like to implement. You know, bring your children. And, you know, if we have someone from every walk of life as a part of these groups because we need to hear from all sides to make sure we cover all bases. So if you, if you need to get in contact with me, I had to write my number down. My number is 914-840. 4024. I don't call myself, so I don't remember the number. 914-840-4024. If you need assistance in how to um, help your young people, how to help your adults, how to have those conversations and things of that nature, you call my phone. If I don't pick up, you leave a message. I get back to you. But we have to start working together, control the narrative of our city, and do better by one another so our city can become better. It will only like, like they always said, no one's coming to save us. We have to save ourselves, right? So we have to continue to work together, do what's good for our community, and we can only do that together. And I want to say this last thing. I want to give a shout out to Michelle Swain. Michelle um, did something very nice today. She posted about Jade Christine. Many of us over the years brought lemonade from Jade as she was selling her lemonade so that she can go to college. Jade has now graduated from college last month. So we wanna give a shout out to Jade for graduating from Barnard College. Um, we have a lot of our young people who are graduating this year, whether they're graduating from pre-K, K, eighth grade, 12th grade, college. I went to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We had lots of young people who were graduating. They were celebrating them. We have young people who are going to college on scholarships. We have young people who are going to be working this summer. We have young people who are doing positive things. And if we don't do anything to celebrate them and uplift them, and if the only thing that we sit here and we push out as the narrative is the negative that happens in this community, we're going to make our young people feel that it's a futile effort um, and, and we have to we, we have to talk about the challenges. We can't run away from the challenges, but we also have to make sure that we're lifting up our young people who are doing incredible things so that other young people know that there are positive things that are happening here in the community and they're not just by themselves. Last thing we want to say is tomorrow we have the Teen Summit. This is all about our young people being able to speak. Um, our Cynthia Turnquest Jones, our trustee school board trustee Cynthia Turnquest Jones will be moderating this discussion. It is going to happen at 38 South 2nd Avenue, 38 South 2nd Avenue um, at Mount Calvary CME Church. Uh, again, as we close, we want to give some love to Mr. Anthony Boyd Sr. and Mrs. Boyd on the loss of their son, Anthony Boyd Jr. We are still with you here in the community to Eva, who continues to go to school. We're thinking about you also. We want to give love to the Thomas and the Collins family. Um, Kenyatta and Jay, we are praying with you and your family for Jared. Mama Thomas, uh, Mama Juanita, who is a prayer warrior, a prayer warriors for this entire community. We want to let you know and we want um, that we are here for you. And Tommy, Andrew, we are here um, for you and Tommy and your family. And, and Ali, because this is Ali Guess's nephew. And Ali goes around and he's constantly talking about gun violence. He's talking about stiff. So stop the itchy finger. We have some um, of his stop signs that we will be putting in our different playgrounds. Mount Vernon is about not only getting involved, but it's about changing our mentality and changing the culture of Mount Vernon. No one's coming in to save us. We have to save ourselves and we have the ability to do it. So let's get together. Let's work together. 
Um, we are Mount Vernon strong. We are Mount Vernon proud and Mount Vernon is moving forward. And either you're going to move forward with us or you're going to get left behind. But there is room on this train for everyone. Everyone's invited. It's not an exclusive club. Mount Vernon, come together, be involved and make a difference. Thank you so much and have a good night. I'm asking for my panelists to stay. And remember the vote. And remember the vote. We have early voting um, from now until next Sunday. And then there is the general election that is happening on Tuesday to the 22nd. Please everyone make sure that you remember to vote. Your local elections are much more important to your day-to-day -day quality of life than even your national elections. So, you know, we saw lines around the block when it was the presidential election, but we're not seeing that type of line around the block right now. So everyone, please come out and vote, make a difference and help us to move Mount Vernon forward. And I'm sure council um, and Thompson and I will be back sometime this week to have more discussion about that. Thank they you guys. call my number if they need a ride to the polls, but you need to vote. You need to vote. There's the early voting polls right now are Mount Vernon City Hall and the Mount Vernon Dole Center. So we have um, early voting happening at the at City Hall here, as well as the Dole Center. And then on the 22nd, it will be at your regular polling place and we will have information up on the website and all of our social media pages. Please gentlemen, stay here while we end the broadcast. Everyone take care and have a good night. Be well. <laughs>